listen up. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Kel. The Lucy and Kel podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a Monday podcast. Hello, Luce. Hello. Hello, Ro. Hello. I was a bit too excited then. Let me just bring it back down to podcast, Lucy. Hey. Nice and relaxed. Yep. How are you doing? I used to sit down doing the podcast and now I'm standing up and so I'm bringing the energy. I am used to standing up. I've been standing up doing radio now for several years. Yeah, which is wild. You've just learned to do it and you found yourself about the two and a half hour mark, your bum's looking for a seat. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I yeah. get a, it gets a bit sore. Yeah, you got to work in. Yeah. you got to work up to four My hours glutes. of standing. But it's better for you, isn't it? It is isn't better. Standing Sitting better? is the new smoking. Yeah, they say that, but I don't know why. Because not moving is terrible for your health, your cardiovascular health. You've got to move. You've got to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. <laughs> Ro likes to move it, move it. We like to move, move it. it. I had to sit through my daughter doing her school's version of a junior version of Madagascar. It was long. It was very long. <laughs> it was cute. Isn't it always long? My favourite part was where he was dreaming about steaks and all the kids came dressed out as steaks and danced around in a, an ethereal way dressed as big T-bone steaks and it was so weird. I was like, what is this? <laughs> anyway, I digress. The school that your daughter goes to is big on Pixar Disney franchise. Yeah, they did Finding I sat, Nemo. I sat through Finding Nemo. Yeah. That was fun. That was long. <laughs> the best <laughs> prank, I pulled the best prank. Hell came and sat through Shiloh's Finding Nemo a couple of hours of his life and then I said to him the next day, I said, babe, guess what? He's like, what? I said, I've got more tickets. I said, we can go see it now and see it on the other side of the room because we were too far away from Charlotte. So I've got tickets for tonight. And Kel, bless his heart, <laughs> he kept this frozen smile on his face. He was like, okay, great. <laughs> and I could see in his eyes just a sheer panic. And then I laughed. I thought that was one of the best pranks I've ever pulled on you. This is what this, is what this day and age has decided to create, Ro. I don't know if you do this, but do you ambush your partner with a phone occasionally and just randomly fire off questions or statements at him because that's what happens with my wife. No, I probably do that more to my kids. The latest one I've seen going around is I think ladies are asking their men for a cup of tea and judging the response. There was a comedian that was saying this is the new trend and then after the videos of women asking their partners for cups of tea and then seeing the response she came back and rightly said actually it's not a trend it's a test everything's a test when it comes to a wife <laughs> doing something with the husband uh, on the tiktoks i'd I, like a cup of tea i would ace cup of teas 10 out of 10 kel makes the best cups of tea i may i've made most of your cups of teas and also this is how attentive he is and i know you're gonna be like oh stop it but he's pretty good, I know. But I've just got to be honest. I'll be Sometimes I'll be halfway through a cup of tea and it's gone cold and I'll, I'll hold it in my hand and he'll walk past, take it out and replace it with a hot cup he's made. Like, he won't even let me drink an old cold tea. He'll give me a hot... I know. He's pretty amazing. <laughs> Am I? You really are. Oh, I would nice. not settle for less anymore. Sounds like... When you're old and you get married a second time, you know what you want, you know what you're worth and you know what you uh, expect and you you're know what worth. a marriage should be like. And so I am very thankful that you are my partner. You're an extraordinary I, partner. I'm sure there's plenty of partners out there who don't get their partner's cups of tea who are also great. Totally. Yeah. But I'm just saying, in our marriage, that's one of the great markers of our marriage. I mean, does he wash my whites with his red stuff? Yes, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but I can look over that because he's great at tea and he's great at painting the back deck, which is what we did all weekend. We did all weekend. Did you get up to much, Ro, on the weekend? I had kids sport. I went to see a wonderful show. What'd you see? I seen Sister Act. Oh, that's I right. Sister Act. I thought you were going this week for some reason. Mm. Now you've both Let's seen talk about you Sister went, Act. You went on Friday. I went to the premiere. I walked the red carpet. I looked like a numpty again. I did a bad pose. Can't do it. Really bad at it. But um, anyway... Did you love it? I liked it. Oh, I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. I laughed and laughed. It was a great show, but I think my expectations were high because... It is not like the movie. No, it's not. No, and, and it's it's like I didn't understand either that it was kind of like a giant comedy take on the movie. She's not playing Whoopi Goldberg's character. She's playing her own version of the own character that they've created. The songs aren't there. But if you go in and can put all that aside, then you'll enjoy it. But if you go yeah. in expecting it to be the movie on stage, you would be disappointed. So There are some similar references, yeah. but they didn't do the iconic song. But I don't think legally they can. Him. I love him. No. Or Oh Happy Day or what? Joyful Joyful. Well, they were from because the second one. Oh, right. Because they're all, <laughs> they're all licensed. They're all licensed. So they would have licensed oh, the movie. Oh, the license. No, anyway. Seriously. Let's talk about Casey Donovan's voice. Love. She's crazy She's good. She's phenomenal. She's going to be one of the most iconic 
music theatre performers of our time. And I'm the harshest critic and she is she never fails to blow me away. Her voice is faultless. Her dancing is faultless. Her comedy, her timing, her acting, she is stellar. Rhonda Birchmore, extraordinary. Genevieve Lemon as Mother Superior, brilliant. I loved it. All of the voices were, brilliant. were phenomenal. Yeah. I loved the boys. Yeah. Did they dance through the crowd at uh, Intel? Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. I enjoyed it as well. Well, I was there and I bumped into many people. I bumped into our old producer, Azen. I bumped into an old colleague, Mel Tresina, and all of them said, where's Kel? And I said, Kel does not enjoy musicals. He's not here. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> The whole of what you just said is true. Anyway. I don't mind a musical. I like Rent. I think Good. Rent's great. Yeah, Rent's great. And Come I, From I've, Far Away. Did you see I that? I love that one. That was from one away. of my favorites. That was a great one. Yep. And I've seen My Mum Made Me See Les Mis. Yeah, Les Mis is amazing. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, Les Mis is coming back next year, uh, this year, next year, and in an arena spectacular as at Rod, Rod Laver oh, Arena uh, with some famous stars from the UK, including Alfie Bow and Michael Ball, who are two of the best singers in the UK, who are my favorite. So I'm very excited. Luce, I think you just need your own podcast about musical theatre shows. I really do, you don't too, I? Man. I'm off to see Hamilton. I'm applying to Sydney in a few weeks as a treat <laughs> to see it before it closes. And how many times will that be? I don't know. I've lost count. I think it's around seven or eight. I wish it was more. I'm embarrassed it's not more. I feel like I should be saying it's 20. And when well, I'm embarrassed when I say I've only seen it eight or nine times. Our accountant is embarrassed. <laughs> I, I just see dollar signs. <laughs> <laughs> but I got, anyway, I won't even go into it. I was going to say I got really cheap tickets, which made it affordable. We digress. We had a great chat on the show today. We did. Do we want to unpack anything more about blended families? Because yeah, that's what about... that was the main conversation yeah. we had on the show. And I really loved being able to do that because simply a lady reached out to me on socials. And again, if you ever want to chat about anything, just reach out to us on socials. Lucy and Kel and she asked us how did we get our friends to be such great mates in our blended family Kel and I've been married for two and a half years now and I had to say to her look I wish I could say it was all this stuff that Kel and I did I said but it isn't our girls just our best friends I said they were great friends before Kel and I were together and they were the ones when Kel and I were friends they were saying why don't you date we'd love you to date we'd love to be sisters one day yeah, they so think, if you ask they think them, all of what's happening now is, is their idea if you ask our 10 and 11 year old why Kel and I together they Wait say it's second. because of us Wait they truly believe it's them were we parent trapped you were parent trapped what <laughs> but um it's nothing we do encourage friendship and we'll often say to them hey you know family is the very most important thing be kind to your siblings we encourage them to hang together to chill together like i even last night i saw our two girls snuggled on the couch they both love drawing they have the same interests and so they're sitting there and one of them's flicking through her art pad showing the other daughter and the other daughter's like that's amazing that's so good i love what you've done here and i just stood there watching them just love on each other encourage each other and i got emotional i went into the bedroom and i said to kel i just we're so blessed they these two will be best friends for life but it's again it's not us it's it's them but there are things we can do especially in blended families in any family like I say to encourage friendship between our kids sometimes it's not natural and you need to encourage it and build it and looking in the grand scope of any family Ro I got a feeling I've never had a brother but I got a feeling boys sometimes thick as thieves other times the WWE is that Mm, true yes yes because boys don't and I was a boy growing up we don't necessarily use our words all the time well my boys when they're not around each other, they get bored and they miss each other. Oh. But when they're together, they fight like cats and dogs. That's interesting. So when they're yeah. time apart and they think of each other fondly and then time together and then it just turns into a complete mess. I think it's just because they realise oh, it feels different when that other person's not here. Yeah. Mm. And so they don't know what to do with themselves because they don't have anyone to annoy. What's the age difference on the boys? 17 months. Really? It's close. Mm. It's so close. super close. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. We actually should talk about that on the show, the age gap between siblings, because I feel like I actually think my boys would have been better if they were further apart. Mm. That is interesting. Well, my sister and I are eight years apart, and we are best friends. Are you, how far apart are you with your siblings? Four and six years. Even numbers. My parents did the same thing. My parents did two, two, and two. Our daughters, Shiloh and Nina, are about 11, 10 months apart, and it is perfection for those two Mm. Mm. that is interesting 17 months is hardly anything they're going through the same things at the same time they're going through puberty at the same time Mm -hmm. oh Oh, Ro how are you even dealing with it I'm not thoughts (laughs) thoughts and prayers the Lucy and Kel podcast I was at my mum's last night because my mum was celebrating a something birthday I'm not sure how old she is we mentioned this last week I'm not sure how old mum is but happy birthday to mum as we celebrated her birthday 
She enjoyed her time. I was down there with the twins and my sisters, and one of my sisters has her two boys. So all the cousins were together, and we're having pizza and celebrating mum and singing happy birthday, and there was chocolate cake, and there was far too many lollies for the kids, and we're all having fun. And halfway through the birthday party celebrations, we were informed that my sister is having a garage sale, and my mum was going through the old kids' playroom. So mum obviously as a grandmother had my kids and my sister's kids growing up and she would have an entire room dedicated to play where we'd just park all the kids on family get-togethers mm. and there'd be a whole manner of toys and boxes of stuff and board games mm. and we had all of that out of the toy room and we're going through it because my sister's about to have a garage sale on Saturday and we might be able to you know mum was thinking if she's having a garage sale, then mum could have a garage sale of some of her oh, stuff. Wow. But there's all these old board games and some of these board games that I'd never seen before and my daughter Nina grabbed a box and opened it up and she said, Dad, I want to play this. And I'm like, what is it? And she said, it's a board game called 20 Questions. And I said, well, why don't you bring it to the table? Because we're all sitting around the table enjoying birthday pizza and having cool family chats. And I said, why don't you bring this to the table and we can all play it together. You just read out the cards. And we'll try and guess what it is in 20 questions. That's essentially what the game was. I've never played it before. Mm. But essentially you have a card, it's got 20 descriptive things on it and you have to try and guess what the thing is. It's either a person, a place or a thing. And we then spent the next hour playing 20 questions. Oh. It was such a cool board game that I've never played before. So cool, in fact, I thought we'd play it here this morning oh. for you, Liz. Would you oh. like to play 20 questions? Yes, I'd love, I love a game. It's a great game. Essentially, like I said, I'm, I don't know if it's ever been a popular game. I understand the idea of it. Like, the idea of it isn't new, but this was in the form of a board game. It had a board, you had little tokens you could move around the okay. board. But essentially, it was 20 identifiable things describing something, and you get points if you guess it earlier rather than later. So I'll give you five points on the board. Mm. You have to guess this thing. Mm. It's a thing. Okay. There are five describable little phrases that I'll give you as clues. Yep. Uh, if you guess it in the first one, you get five points. Great. And then the points diminish. Four, three, two, one. Here we gotcha. go. For five points, I am helpful to a large group of people. Lucy Holmes. See, a lot of people did that joke last night. A lot of people said, insert their name here. Uh, did that, but sorry. I will okay, no, say... No, 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 no. No, no, no that, that was your guess. No. That is incorrect. Okay. Although you are helpful to a large group Thanks. of people. It's not you. <laughs> So for four points. Yeah. Sometimes I can be hot. I am helpful to a large group of people. Sometimes I can be hot. The sun. For three points. I am a sound investment. I am helpful to a large group of people. Sometimes I can be hot. I am a sound investment. Is that like a joke or is that like a serious? Well, this is part of the fun of the board game. Some of the clues are plays on words. Puzzles within puzzles. Oh, so a sound investment. For three That's, points. So you help people, you're hot. Sometimes I can be hot. Sometimes you're Not hot. Not all the time, just sometimes. And you are a sound investment. Any idea? You can pass. Pass. For two points, I can be hidden. I am helpful to a large group of people. Sometimes I can be hot. I'm a sound investment and I can be hidden. Pass. Oh, she's giving up. And the final one for one point. My name shortened is a man's name. I can be helpful to a large group of people. Sometimes I can be hot. I'm a sound investment. I can be hidden. And my name shortened is a man's name. For one solitary point, what am I? No. <laughs> so this board game is probably not for you. <laughs> I am a microphone. Yeah! I am helpful to a large group of people. Sometimes I can be a hot mic. I am a sound investment. I can be hit. And my name shortened is a man's name. That's dumb. Who would ever it's get dumb that? because you didn't get it right. No one would ever get that. Not one <laughs> well, person. somebody around the table got it right last night. No. And I just thought, what a great board game this is. It's brought mm. the whole family around the table. Lucy would have just been sitting there with her arms crossed going, no, nope, I'd rather <laughs> play a game of life. <laughs> Do you have a board game that you can think of that is just a guaranteed get the family around the table? Because there used to be a lot growing up. Unfortunately well, for us, the mousetrap game was one of them. Hate them. We didh uh, didn't like mousetrap mouse at trap. all. It takes an hour to set up. The kids play it for one minute and go, hate it. I will say this. My sister and my nieces are obsessed with rummy cub. And last Christmas, they bought me my own rummy cub. 
but I hate Rummy Cub. Sounds like something my grandma so would have played. it's so hard to play because it's all numbers. It's a number game. And my three family members, Rebecca, Katie and Ellie, they are so next level elite at Rummy Cub now. It's like watching A Beautiful Mind. They're moving numbers. They're seven steps ahead. And I'm that person that can't even do one move. And so it's very stressful playing with them. They wanted me to become a Rummy Cub lover and I did not. Is that the one with the cards as well? Do you have cards and no. numbers involved? No. So it's just it's dice just t- and no. maths. No, it's not dice and maths it's like these little tiny tiles that are all different numbers that you get out of a bag and then you're lining up things and you're splitting your numbers into their numbers and you're taking numbers and you're making giant long trains of numbers sounds like somebody's tried to disguise mathematics as fun yeah, it does feel like that and, and i I'm won't not, be taking for a here. ride i much prefer game of life where you get married and have babies speak and put it. dogs and cats in the back of your little pink convertible and then let's, whiz around let's speak about that because guaranteed i knew straight away the one board game you would highlight the one that got your whole family around the table was game of life which i've never quite understood but do you know what I do truly love? I truly love Scrabble. Oh, do you? If we played Scrabble, if you and I become Scrabble people, Scrabble, Scrabble people, I would, Scrabble people, I would love that. If you would play Scrabble with me. I'm not the greatest speller in the world and I think you would judge me. I think you would judge my three little words. And you'd be like, really? You've got seven tiles and you're only using three of I them? I just wish you were a Scrabble guy. I wish that was I our marriage. I could be a Scrabble guy. But I just would love to play I Scrabble. Just, I just want to highlight that a lot of old couples play Scrabble. My mum and Babe, dad. we are an old couple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Scrabble's a good one. My kids, and I don't know why I'm proud of this. It's not really anything to be proud of, but my kids know how to play chess. I taught all my kids That's chess. That's impressive. You taught Shiloh how to play chess, actually. It's a great game. You chess taught, is a great Shiloh. game. Because chess, once you learn the fundamentals of chess, then you start actually learning how to play it. Because it's easy to learn. It's hard to master yeah. the game of chess. I like any trivia games. I was never big on Because I know all trivia, so I win any... You know it all? Like Trivial Pursuit, (laughs) Trivial Cold, any trivia game, I win because I know so much useless trivia. Yeah, Daniel goes, I love Seen It, the DVD board game where you guess movie scenes. We had a game growing up. So old school. Might have been like Seen It, but it was a VHS edition. It was like a... It was a VHS... Was it scary? No, it was a board game about American commercials and you pop oh. the tape into the VHS machine and then you would play the same tape every time and you'd have to answer questions about these American commercials that none of us had seen here in That's Australia. That's so funny. That's a cool I, memory I worked, I worked at Toys R Us in the 90s and the biggest seller back then was a VHS game called Atmosphere, which oh, was like right. a scary, spooky one. Spooky. Spooky. How funny that we used to put VHS tapes in to play games. 715 on the text has said they love a game called Blockus. So I just Googled Blockus because I've never heard of it and I'm looking at it and I think I would very much like Blockus. Is it a cousin or is it, as you like to say, adjacent to Jenga? No, not at all. Not at all, okay. Imagine a flat tray and you have heaps of different little... It's like Tetris in real time, but you're all playing against each other. You've got all your different pieces and I think what you're trying to do is block everyone and try and get as many pieces on the board, but it's like all different Tetris shapes and you might be red, yellow, green or blue. And I think you're trying to block everyone, hence the word blockus. It's an abstract strategy board game. There we go. See, I think I'd like that. All That's right. good. Blockers fans out there, let what us know. What about those people that play like Catan or Catan where it like, looks big and long and like you're taking oh, over civilizations, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, it's like Risk. Yeah, yeah, if you get involved in a game of Risk, say goodbye to the rest of the day. I don't like Monopoly, but I do like Cluedo. I could do a bit of Cluedo. Is Cluedo okay these days? Which is essentially a board game for kids about Murder? Yeah, maybe. Is that okay anymore? No, I think it's like, who ate the apple pie it's in the library? Not like that. Mr. It's Peacock. Not. It might be. There will be kids' versions. Okay, It'll, good. It won't be about murder. Uh, and also, of... wait, just two more Battleship and Connect Four. We still rock Battleship at home. Our kids love Battleship yep. at our house. My 19 year old will even extricate himself from his bedroom to play Battleship with his brothers and sisters. That's how popular Battleship is in our house. Yeah. You've sunk my Battleship. Lorinda goes, she loved Sail of the Century and. Uno slash you know. Sail of the Century. I believe I might be making this up, but did Sail of the Century, the board game, have the buzzers? Can't remember. Never had it. Never owned it. Oh, that would have been so great if you had the buzzers that made the iconic sound effect when you hit buzzers on Sail of the Century. Tom in South Morang loves Squatter. Uh, Squatter is more like what you were talking about. Yeah, Yeah. more like the risk, more like have you got seven and a half hours? Yes. Yes. Let's play Squatter. (laughs) Yeah, that sort of thing. Someone says, my 11-year-old grandson is totally jammy at Catan. Is it Catan or Catan? I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Catan. We love it. The average game lasts 45 minutes. We play two games to try and regain some shred of pride after he's wiped the floor with us. Right. Can I also say, as an old person, is jammy a word I need to know about? I don't know. He's jammy a- at... 
Is that a good? Cool, sounds jammy? cool. Sounds like I'm jammy at I'm stuff. Totally jammy. I I'm do just, love it. I might be old. Uh, my daughter and her husband play Carcassonne. It's so good. It's easier than Catan with a little more element of luck. Mm. Yeah, I Why love is everything so hard to pronounce? <laughs> Carolyn goes, We discovered Wingspan. Well, that sounds fun. She goes, It's beautiful illustrations. I've never heard of it. I'm going to Google it, though. Judy has got a great text. Judy goes, Lucy and Kelly, in answer to your question about a children's version of Cluedo. Oh, yes. We, we talked about Cluedo and the fact that, let's be honest, it's a board game for kids about murder. And, and Kel was like, how's how that appropriate? How do we rectify that in this day and age? And I said, surely it's not. I said, surely it's like they've... And I jokingly I jokingly said, surely it's like about the apple pie. Yes. And Judy's gone, it's actually called The Case of the Missing Chocolate Cake. That sounds better. I was so close. Yep. She goes, it's so great. We have five different versions of Cluedo, including a video version. And she goes, we've spent many happy hours playing them over the years. We're going to take the calls from Listener of the Year 2019, Doomsday Shane. Good morning, Shane. Good morning. How are we? So Very good. good. Yeah. Love seeing your name on the screen, Shane. Favourite board games? Yes. Yeah. So during lockdown, we, we went a bit mad on the board game. Mm. But some of the more modern ones. So we still play. We do have Cluedo and Kids Monopoly as well as Grown Up Monopoly. But two of our favourites are cooperative board games where we work together oh. against uh, plans. So yep. one of them's called Forbidden Island, where your adventure is trying to collect four treasures before the island sinks. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's which drama. is quite, quite exciting. There's lots of people screaming at the end, <laughs> quick, get off the island, get off the island. Sounds uh, fun, I like that. And one of the other ones we like is where, if you like anti-heroes, it's called Burgle Brothers, and you're actually a bunch of thieves trying to steal something like from... A, like a family version of Ocean's Eleven or something like that yes. Day, right? Yes, essentially, yeah, and you're working against the, the guards who are patrolling the floors <laughs> and you're trying to escape and get round it. That's quite exciting these as well. These are great. These are I so never, good. I, I've always thought of board games as competitive against each other, like just tearing rifts in family relationships. But I competitive think, board games uh, yeah. where you join together as a yeah, team. I think I like that. I think that would work for our family. The Lucy and Kel podcast. You're going to love this next bit. Oh, spoiler alert. Early this morning, we spoke about our kids on their scooters. If you weren't listening, let me recap it. Your kids came over bringing their scooters from their other place. My daughter was like, oh, I don't have a scooter. And I was like, babe, I've got a scooter in the garage, a big adult size off-road one that I bought during COVID Mm. because I had every intention to scoot every day during the lockdowns. And those two five-minute sessions you scooted with that scooter were the most memorable you've ever had. (laughs) It hurt my leg. I was like, this is terrible. just lived in the garage. And I thought, I'll sell years. this because it's worth quite a lot of money. But I didn't. And I said to Shai, you can use my one. You'll fit it. She grabs mine, instantly in love with it. The three of our kids spend the entire weekend hooning around our court, doing jumps off yep. people's curbs. Being fully sick. They were loving their life. We've never seen anything like it. They scooted past me at one point and one of them shouted, this is better than iPads. And I thought, yes, thank goodness. And we both looked up from our iPads and we said, yes, it is. That is. In fact, we actually went and sat on our front porch and watched them scooting for ages. They had so much fun. I could not believe how much fun the kids were having on the scooters. It went on for hours and hours and hours. They popped Kel's boot in the court. They put their drinks and snacks there. They called it the car bar. At one point, I, Maddie comes running in and then I hear all this clanking and Maddie has filled up metal water bottles for everyone. He's taken them out. Shiloh runs in. She's like, do you mind if I get snacks for everyone? She goes back out with Oreos for everyone. It was amazing. Now, listen, our kids get along. At the best of times. They they just, for whatever reason, our personalities of all our children just gel. And it's always been that way since Kel and I married. Our kids have been as thick as thieves from day one. Uh, Shiloh believes they are her siblings and blood siblings. And woe to anyone who tells her that they are not. They are her family. They are her siblings. She adores them. But... This weekend was just a next level up of bonding. At one point, they did come up to us and they yelled, we're doing sibling bonding time, and they skated off again. It was really very, very, very cute. And I posted some of these things on my Instagram. I posted some videos of them skating, saying they're living their best lives. I got a great message from another mum on Instagram, and she just opened up and she said, look, can I have some advice? I'm in a blended family too and I've got a girl and, and there is another daughter. They're around the same age and there's just a lot of jealousy and I I don't know how to help them. You know, what did you do for your kids? And so we were messaging back and forth and I, I explained that I'm very lucky. Our kids had a lot of, they just got along from day one. I said, but I do do things 
intentionally to try and make Charlotte always realise that I'm her mummy and I've got her back and that I love everyone, but, you know, she's my daughter as well. I encourage all the kids. I let your kids know that too, that I'm there for them. I encourage all the kids that we are family and we are friends and we make sure we love our family, we defend our family, we stick up for our family, we speak super kindly to our family because we, we have to look after each other. Mm. So we're really intentional about that as well. And then also I said to this amazing mum, I said, look, you know, I also make sure that Shy and I get time alone because we're in a big family now. So I make sure Shy and I do have some mother-daughter time together. And you also do that with your son and daughter. And then also I say to I say to her, I also take the girls out together and then I try and encourage their relationship and be there so they can see it's very equal. So, But it was a really good question and I understand I understand that a lot of people get into this situation and this is an issue sometimes they face. And we don't want to paint the picture that the kids are all getting on like a house on fire. Sometimes it's quite literally like a house on fire, like the house is burning to the ground because it's on fire. There was an acclimatisation and, you know, Charlotte had to learn how to deal with a brother. She'd never had a brother before. Mm. And so there were, there, there can be little spats and normal just brother-sister stuff where they're not getting along, but predominantly they all get along. But I think, you're right, I think my daughter, my 11-year-old, and your 10-year-old mm. daughter just found the similar sort of energies and likes and the same sort of things that they wanted to do together. And they've just formed a very, very close bond, which yeah. is beautiful to see. And again, I'd like to say that most of that was formed by you and I, but I think a lot of it's down to luck as well and yeah. just personality yeah, type. Yeah, their personality types. Uh, my son, Matthew, is very much, he can get involved in what the girls are getting up to. And also he could care less sometimes and just be off by himself. Yeah. So it is, it's all about family dynamic and not every dynamic in the family is going to work perfectly. Perfectly. I've got two teenagers in the house as well, so that's a lot of sleeping energy and a lot of sometimes emotionally and you know charged energy. So there's a lot of stuff going on, but I think when it comes predominantly to the younger kids, for some reason they have just locked in to a way of being, which seems to be very family orientated. There mm. wasn't too many teething problems, so we're very lucky in that regard. But I thought we could open the phone lines this morning because I know this mama is listening. I let her know. I said, I'm going to chat about this because I think there might be some great listeners who have some really great advice about this very subject. Now, it's not just blended families, so this is about encouraging friendship and that kind of spirit in children as well, who are perhaps the... Like, how do you encourage friendship between your own children and your stepkids? And also, maybe if you've just got kids who are struggling to get along as well, because, gosh, we all know that, um, you know, you often fight with your siblings. And I feel like you touched on it earlier in the conversation that we all want, as parents, everyone to get along. Mm. And we, especially when you're a, a found family, when you bring two different groups of families together. But I think there is some wisdom in not trying to force this utopian idea of what you think a family wants to be. I know as parents, we have an idea of what our family would be like if it mm. was perfect. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes it needs time. So you can do like Lucy has done, set up these little get togethers, set up these little excursions with different groups, different dynamics in the family. But also sometimes that just doesn't work. And sometimes people just need time. I've just got a little message about there to read out which was a lovely they haven't left their name but 623 says uh, just a comment about your blended family conversation we've been my husband and I've been together for 20 years he had a son I had a son and a daughter she goes I think the thing to be aware of is that children hold emotions very very differently she said we tried to let them know that this new family unit was a safe place for them and that their feelings were going to be understood and respected she goes they didn't always get along but what kid does really she goes but 20 years on they have the most beautiful relationship and connection her and her husband had three more children together but we made it very clear that every child was loved accepted and treasured and no one was unequal they are all our children that is such a beautiful, beautiful. sentiment i'm sure they sense that which is why now they've grown up to these adults that all adore each other yeah and a whole nother journey i didn't even take that into account that you might have children from two different families and then you have children from that marriage and that's all blending together as well karen says we are a blended family of five they were very young when we got married but they're very close i treated them all equally but I did struggle sometimes but now the relationship is so wonderful she goes in God's strength you can create the best family for you mm. I think maybe mathematically I'm not saying this is just our experience
experience, younger kids seem to be more adaptable to different situations. I yeah. think if you've got teenagers, obviously they've led a bit more of a life. They're a bit more set in their ways. And if you try and bring teenagers together in a blended family, that might have its own unique hurdles that you yeah. need to negotiate. Yeah. Ben, what do you think about this? Is this something that you are about to embark on? Good morning, Lucy. Good morning, Kel. How are we? Good, good to good, hear ben. from you, Ben. Great to have you on board. Do you want to weigh in? I think you two are absolutely spot on. It does require a lot of intentionality for the friendships to be fostered and to encourage as well. And as you said, I'm about to embark on that. Myself and my fiance, we're getting married in February. Woo! Uh, yeah. yeah, so we're going to be like the Brady Bunch, three boys, three girls. So it's going to be, uh, wow. you know, a bit of a hectic, hectic household. But... <sighs> Yeah, we decided very early on that things like, well, we're not going to have your kids, my kids, we're just going to be kids. And to make sure that everyone is accessible or has access to either parent so that there's no no one's any more or less important than everyone else. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. We talked about earlier. Yes, ben. You have to, if you can't grasp <laughs> the concept of family straight out of the gate, try and initiate the idea of a team. We're on the same team. team. You have teamwork. That's work. what we've tried to do. Yeah. yeah. Ben, this that's great, really ben. exciting. I'm so excited for you. Ben's been a long time listener and a long time caller and to see you now getting married, Ben, and having all these stepkids in this next version of your life. I'm, I know we don't know each other personally bar over the phone over the years, but I am so excited for you, Ben. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it is pretty exciting. It is exciting. And, and blended families are a beautiful big bonus. And look, all families are really tricky sometimes. Blended or not, we know it's a lot sometimes. But I think the key, like we've all been saying this morning, is about being intentional and fostering that sense of team and family. The Lucy and Kel podcast. Wrapping up the podcast. Great conversation about blended families. If you have any correspondence for Lucy, myself, or producer Ro, you can always email the podcast. You know it. Come on. <laughs> Lucy and Kel at Positive Media. Positive Media. <laughs> dot com. Dot au. Dot oh au. my god. <laughs> and you can do that. And you can ask us any sorts of questions. Like the lady who inquired of you about nurturing better blended families look. Yes, or you can find Lucy and Kel on Instagram or Facebook and I will reply to all your messages there as well. We want to just do life with you. We want to figure it all out together. We love this show that we've created over, gosh, it's its 11th year this year and the podcast is, well, it's a brand new version of this 11-year-old show. So we love just doing life and having these kind of conversations. There is no question too big or too small. You cannot ask of us. We will tackle it. And until we meet again for the next downloadable podcast, have yourself a great whatever time of the day this is for you. Bye. Bye. Well, that's all for now. But you can download more podcasts anytime or catch Lucy and Kel live weekday mornings from 6 till 10 on 89.9 The Light.